Hello everyone, welcome to your 33rd C++ Qt game tutorial. So let's go ahead and go look at our plan sheet and see what's in store for this tutorial. Um, so if you recall, in the previous tutorial, we allowed each hex to know who its neighbors are. Now the goal of this tutorial is to, basically, when a card is placed, after it finds out who its neighbors are, it should conquer weaker neighbors. And we're going to encapsulate all of this in a member function called capture neighbors. Um, so basically, this member function called capture neighbors, let me scroll down, it will traverse through the list of neighbors. Remember that we gave every hex a list of its neighbors. It will uh, compare the attack value of the touching sides, so the touching sides. And here we wrote a list of which sides touch which other sides. So if the hex is attack value is greater, then it will conquer the neighbor. And by conquer, we mean it will just switch the owner of the neighbor. So we have to give hexes another member function called switch owner, which will simply switch the owner. That's a pretty easy one to implement, so we didn't have to write notes about it. Now, which sides are we going to compare? This is a matter of convention, a matter of notation. If you recall in our um, earlier tutorials, this is the notation that we chose. We chose to call this top side, side zero, we call this one side 1, this one side 2, etc. So here I have drawn a, a small hex board and I've labeled all these sides. So clearly, as you can see, we should compare side 0 with 3, side 5 with 2, side 4 with 1, side 3 with 0, side 2 with 5, and side 1 with 4. So we found out which sides to compare with which other sides. And this information is useful because uh, for example, if this is the neighbor, if this is the zeroth neighbor, then you want to compare the zeroth attack value of this hex to the threeth attack value of this hex. And then if this is the neighbor, you want to compare the fifth attack value of this to the second attack value of this. I hope that makes sense. So let's go ahead and begin our implementation. I'm going to go ahead and tackle this switch owner member function first because it's relatively straightforward. <clears throat> so we'll go inside the hex class and declare and define it here. Uh, it's not switch neighbor, switch owner. Okay. <clears throat> This will basically find out who its current owner is and then make the other player its owner. So it's pretty simple. You guys will be able to follow this logic. I don't have to explain it much. So if the owner is player one, make it player two and vice versa. So this will get the owner. So if it's player one, we're going to set the owner to player two. Then we're going to do the opposite if, it's, if the owner is player two. So else if owner is equal to player two, then what are we going to do? We're going to make it player one. So this switch owner member function will do exactly as its name implies. It will simply switch the owner of the hex. And there we go. We tackled that one out of the way. So let's go ahead and look at our plan sheet and see. OK, so now we're going to implement this capture neighbors uh, member function. And again, this will simply traverse through the list of neighbors, compare the respective sides. And then if it's bigger than its neighbor, it will conquer it. So let's go ahead and give this capture neighbors member function. Okay. And we'll go ahead and start implementing this member function. Okay, so let's write a quick comment. Traverses through neighbors and captures weaker neighbors. Okay, so let's do a loop to traverse. So, tra uh, 
traverse to all the neighbors. Okay. There we go. And now we want to know two things. We want to make sure that this neighbor is an enemy. And then we also want to make sure that this neighbor is not neutral. So let's make two rules to keep track of that. So is enemy initially we'll make it false and bool uh, is not neutral. We'll make this initially true. And then we're going to see basically. So is, is not neutral? No, we're going to make this false. So we're going to both are going to be false. And now let's find out what they really are. So if the owner of this, uh, if the owner of this hex is not equal to the owner of the neighbor, so neighbors, that, this neighbor that we're currently traversing, let's get its owner. Okay. So if that's the case, then we can safely say, let me make sure. Okay. Uh, then we can safely say that this is the enemy. So it is an enemy. Okay, good, we figured that out. Now we're also going to um, basically check one more thing. If um, we want to basically find out that it's not neutral. So if neighbors, I, owner, if the owner of the neighbor is not equal to if it's not neutral and we named neutral no one then we also want to change this bool is not is not neutral to be true okay so we want to keep track of two things if the neighbor is an enemy and if the neighbor is not neutral and if these and if both of these two things end up being true then we want to do something. Okay, so let's see what should we do here. Um, so here we're assuming that it is an enemy and not neutral. Okay, in that case, what do we do? Well, now we have to find out which um, neighbor we're talking about. Because this is the zero with neighbor, remember? Side zero, zero with neighbor. Side five, five with neighbor. Side four, four with neighbor, etc. We have to find out which neighbor it is. Because if it's the zero with neighbor, we want to compare the zero with side of this hex with the three th side of this hex. If it's the one with neighbor, we want to compare the one of the hex to the four of the uh, neighbor, etc. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, so we're gonna see. So here we have if if is enemy and is not neutral. N e u t r l. Okay, there we go. If it is an enemy and it's not neutral, um, find attack of a. So we're gonna find attack of adjacent. Or we'll say touching sides. That's a better word. Um, okay, so. Let's make two integers, one that will keep track of this hex's attack. We're going to initially set it to zero. We'll find it out later. We'll make another variable to keep track of the neighbor's attack. So neighbor's attack, we're we'll also going to make it zero. Now let's find out the real value. We're going to have another if statement in here. I know it's getting a little too nested, but it's not too difficult to follow. Um, so if i is equal to zero, this means that if this uh, uh, if this is the zero with neighbor, well, what do we do? Let's look here. If it's the zero with neighbor, we want to compare the attack of side zero of this hex to the attack of side three of the neighbor. So let's go ahead and do that. Um, let's make sure I have my indentation correct here. Okay. Uh, so we're going to set this attack, we're going to set this value to attack of side, we're going to make it attack of, I believe that's called attack of, or does it get attack? Yeah, it's called get attack of, so get attack of side zero. And then 
neighbor's attack, well, which side do we want to get? Well, we said side three, I believe. So neighbors, we're going to get the neighbor, the zero with neighbor, because that's, we're assuming it's a zero. And uh, we're going to basically get attack of side three. So essentially, if this is the zero with neighbor, then we want to compare uh, the attack of side zero of this hex with the attack of side three of the neighbor. And then uh, now we're going to see, OK, so what if it's not the zero with neighbor? Let's do else if i is equal to 1. So if this is the one if neighbor, then what do we want to do? Well, let's go ahead and look at our drawing here. If it's the one if neighbor, then we want to uh, compare the attack of side 1 of the hex to the attack of side 4 of the neighbor. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so we're going to set this attack to get attack of, um, we want attack of side one, and then neighbor's attack to neighbors, and this is neighbor one, clearly, get attack of, and which side was it? Uh, I think it was side four. Let's just check one with four, one with four. Okay, uh, yeah. So now you do a similar thing. You say, okay, so what if it's the 2th or the 3th or the 4th? So I'm going to go ahead and do that because it's really boring to, and repetitive for you guys to watch it. I'll go ahead, uh, do pause it, and do that, and then I will resume. Okay, so I went ahead and did a similar behavior for the remaining side. So now we found out this the attack of this hex and the attack of its neighbor, and we want to simply compare them. Um, so we'll go ahead and do that right here. So if this has greater attack, then switch neighbor's owner. Simple as that. So if this attack is greater than neighbor's attack, we're going to switch the neighbor's owner. And there we go. Um, that should be it. So we have this capture neighbors member function, which will capture any weaker neighbors. When do we want to call this member function? We want to call this when you place a card. So whenever you place a card, we want to quickly traverse through its neighbors and capture all the weak neighbors. So we're going to go inside uh, the game class, and we have a place card member function here. And this is where we're going to call it. So right after we find neighbors, we're going to capture any weaker neighbors. So we're going to do card to place, capture neighbors. And that's it. Uh, let's save it and let's run it and see if it works. We have a few small bugs. Term does not evaluate. So let's see, what could this mean? Um, oh, okay, so this is a, a really uh, kind of cryptic error message, but basically I didn't call this owner. I called my member function get owner. So let's just correct that. It's a, it's a silly bug. And this should fix that. Now we have another one. So, so yes, we'll go ahead and get owner. Not, and there we go. get owner oh sorry about these silly mistakes get attack of oh and we also have to define the get attack of so let me just uh, go ahead and define that uh, so this get attack of member function should be really easy to implement um, we haven't defined it yet I thought we did but it's really easy so basically Based on the value of this integer, you're going to return the respective side. So uh, you're just going to do uh, basically if side is equal to 0. If it's side 0, then you want to return you want to return uh, side 0 attack. And then you're going to do else if 
side is equal to 1, you're going to return side 1 attack. And so on. So this is boring. I'm going to finish this and pause. Okay, so this get attack of member function will now simply return the attack of the uh, side. So let's um, go ahead and run this. And now let's play it. And there we go. So now uh, let's go ahead and play this one. And then we'll see this is stronger. Four is stronger than two, so it conquers it. And now let's see, six is stronger than four, so it should conquer that one. There we go. So it works. Um, thank you for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial. Bye-bye.